Hello, and welcome back to my playthrough of Darkest Night. Actually, we are not doing too bad. In the meantime, we were able to gather at least two of these keys, and we need three of those in order to claim one of these holy relics down here, for example, in the forest. Unfortunately, some of our characters are pretty shaken, I would call them, especially the knight, who is already down at one secrecy and two greys, and also the rogue has lost some grace as well. During this turn I will send the knight to the monastery, at least I will try to do that. And yeah, thanks very much for the hint uh, at Board Game Geek to make me aware what I should do with the knight and I'm really... Go back to the monastery, heal up, use the Oath of Persian and then go out and hunt some blights. So I think we can start with the gameplay and again I will start with the wizard. The wizard has now activated the rune of the clairvoyance and there was some misunderstanding from my side or I would call it a language barrier. It says here um, look at the top card of any deck. Of course it means I can have to choose a deck and then I can uh, have a look at that but it's only one single deck and not all of them as I more or less try to understand and yeah maybe I was trying to cheat here I don't know but again we are allowed to look at one deck at the start of his turn so let's have a look at the event deck here and this is a ritual you may spend one grace and lose one secrecy to cancel this event ah it's not terribly bad we have one plight in our location let's have a look you see that there, yep, yeah. there's this one blight here. So a new blight would be spawned here if I would not cancel this event, but I can still use my clairvoyance and I think this is what I will do. So I will send this event card now to the bottom of the deck. And now I draw the real event card for this turn and this is a cultist and has a strength, he has a strength of five and an awareness of three. When I win this fight, the Darkness track would be reduced by one and this is pretty awesome. Uh, win a loot, there is no effect and of course in case of a failure we would have to spend a grace in order not to suffer wound. And I'm really tempted to use my lightning strike and I think this is what I will do. Let's, let's fight with a lightning strike against this cultist. So we are allowed to roll three dice, we need one five. Ah oh, yeah, and we are lucky. So, we won this fight, that means that we can reduce the darkness track. Well, that's not going to happen very often. But of course, we have to um, exhaust our lightning strike because we succeeded. As is action, I think the wizard will search once more. So, we are looking for two. Wow. Again, we are lucky, so let's draw ourselves our map card and in the castle we find a treasure chest. So let's give this treasure chest to the wizard and I'm really thinking of traveling to the location of the knight to give her this treasure chest because the knight really needs some additional um, powers as she is right now still at her starting power deck. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. And in order to travel to um, the knight, we could use the teleport maybe during the next turn as his action. But I think we have to see that. But for now, it's good to know that we have this treasure chest in our possession. Then we come to the turn of the rogue. The rogue is down at two grace. And I'm really thinking of praying one more time this turn in order to increase that grace a little bit. So he does not have to draw an event card because he is in the monastery. And so let's roll our two die. Oh, come on. This was really bad. So tough luck for the rogue. The prayers stay unanswered. There is no blight at the monastery, so he does not have to fight them. But um, as he stayed the whole turn in the monastery, he can increase his secrecy up one point and this is the maximum is going to the default value. And the default value of the rogue is pretty high, it's at 7. Let's have a look at the knight who's also down at the forest. 
First of all, we have to draw the event card and this says Renewal. That's pretty simple. We shuffle the event deck and draw another card. So let's do that. Okay, I shuffled the event deck and also shuffled back the cards that are or, or were on the discard pile and here's our new event card. And this says remove all blights from your current location and recreate an equal number of new blights. Hmm, that's a very strange one. So let's get rid of the skeletons and the spice and let's just draw a new map card for the first new blight and this is the forest and we will face some zombies here isn't that nice the zombies have a strength of four five but only an awareness of three and this is already something good i think and let's see what the second blight is there were originally two blights and this is the evil presence here would be the evil presence again this would subtract one die from our eluding roll Hmm. In the end, not really bad, this new event card, but let's see what the knight will do. And I discussed this already. The knight will simply move into the monastery, would gain one secrecy for this move. We'll flip the turn tracker back to the nighttime side. And then we already come to the face of the druid. First of all, he has to lose one secrecy because the necromancer is present. And this is again the guarded trove with a strength of six and an awareness of six. And I think I don't want to engage the guarded trove here. So I will exhaust my visions bonus power here, which says exhaust after you draw an event card to discard it without effect. Yeah, nice little power you have there, Druid. And as the druid already has two keys, I think ah, it's mandatory to go for another search action down by the forest. So let's roll the search roll here. We need a four. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. And again, we are lucky. Wow, that's so cool. But now let's hope we find something useful. That's the forest. And yeah, that's the key. Isn't that awesome? We found ourselves the third key. So let's flip the daytime or the turn tracker we have found ourselves the third key still we have to face the zombies now by the end of our turn and I was tempted to go for the elude action but this evil presence would subtract one die still I would only have to roll at least a three and yeah I think I will do that so I will only roll one die with my tactic card but I don't have to use the tactic card at all just need three yeah we are lucky so nothing bad happens to the druid. Again, a very, very cool turn for the druid. Of course, the darkness advances again. And so we move the darkness track once more back to number six here. Then we roll our die. Again, that's a five. The secrecy of the druid is lower. So the necromancer stays where he is. Let's see what new blight he's about to um, summon here. And that's a forest and this is, oh, come on. That's desecration. <laughs> and that is one of the worst blights um, that's basically out there. It says plus one on the um, darkness track each round. So this is definitely something we have to take care of during the next round. Next round, and again we will start with the wizard. And the wizard will use his rune of clairvoyance to have a peek at the event deck. And let's see what we have here. And this says shambling horror. And we can now think of using that or keeping that on top of the stack. Or if we want to send this to the bottom of the deck. Um, we have a secrecy of four, so we would engage the mummy here. It could be worse, I have to admit. So I think I will keep it on top of that so we can directly use it and let the wizard yeah, try to, I think yeah, in this case, he will try to evade or elude this mummy here. So we need a four. No, we are not lucky. So we have to spend a grace in order not to die. And as his action, we will use the teleport spell or power here exhaust to move directly to any location gaining two secrecy up to five so at least we get one 
secrecy back. And of course, we will send the wizard down here to the monastery and give the treasure chest to the knight. And the knight will immediately use this treasure chest, so we come now to the turn of the knight, in order to draw herself a new power card, and this says Oath of Valor. Action, we have, so we have to play it as an action, then we can activate it, and as long as it is active, it gives me plus one in fights. And this is really, might sound a little bit odd, because we already have this Oath of Purging, where it says we get two dice in fights, but this says in fights when attacking polites, and this says plus one in fights, so any fight, um, we are dealing with even against the necromancer we will have plus one die and this is definitely a very very powerful oath we found ourselves here in the monastery we don't have to draw ourselves an event card so we will go for a prey action this time so again we will roll two dice and the knight is doing much better than the druid this means we would gain two grace now so one and two and we would also regain one secrecy because we spend our whole turn in the monastery so let's flip turn tracker and again we will deal with the rogue and we still need some more grace for the rogue so again no event phase for the rogue let's roll the two die and at least he's able to manage to roll a four and so the rogue is up to three grace and I think as of the next turn he's definitely leaving the monastery. I had different plans with the druid but I think we definitely have to get rid of this desecration blight here so yeah we have to fight it during our action phase. First of all it's still the necromancer present again he would lose one secrecy. Then we have to draw the event card and this is again the cultist which we would have to fight. Again we could lose one point on the darkness track but I don't want to use my animal companion card here. It's really important because we have to get rid of the desecration here. So um, I think I will elude this guy here and really hope for a five here. If not we will lose one grace that's not completely bad so let's hope for a five or six no of course not that's only a two and so again we have to lose one grace here then we will attack the desecration blight here and this has a might of four we will use our animal companion power now so we can roll two dice and we are looking for fours here and whew, this was really lucky so we can get rid of the desecration right away so that's definitely a good job man but still we have to face the zombies here so we will try to elude one more time so let's roll the die we need a three not a problem here so the druid is pretty safe again end of this round and thanks to the druid the darkness track only increases or is increased by one Let's roll for the Necromancer, that's a 5, so he stays where he is. And again we have to draw a map card in order to see where he will cast the Blight, or what Blight it will cast. This is the forest, and this is, wow, another group of zombies. Wow, this spot is really getting tough. So, wow, this is really tough. We really have to move the Druid away now, as soon as he has managed to gather himself the holy relic here but we might also think of getting one holy relic here from the mountains where there is only one blight present at this point in time and this already ends my episode for today i hope you are still enjoying it and i hope you keep giving me some advice where, on how to play this game and in respect to, to strategies and tactics and of course please make me aware if i misunderstand some of the rules maybe i already got the oath of valor wrong here but i really read active plus one in fight so i think that's the right interpretation here if not let me know let's have a last glance at the game board here and i hope to see you again in my next episode of my playthrough of darkest night and until then bye bye